Hi, great teams. I just want to go through um, a little bit of the PowerPoint regarding fossils. So the last section in the textbook is all about fossils and fossilization and how they form. So you will see on um, Google Classroom that I have uploaded some short videos to watch, as well as a link to a website which really explains very well how fossils are formed. So I'm not going to go through all that all those slides on this PowerPoint, but there are just some that I would like to go through. So if we look here, okay, so this is the um, PowerPoint on fossils that you can go through. Um, just go down. So you're going to go through all these slides by yourself. Okay, it tells you, you know, what fossils are, um, that we call it paleontology, we study fossils, and that really only um, 1% of all organisms that have ever lived on Earth are alive today. And organisms that are living are said to be extinct. And thus we can say that 99% of all biodiversity has died out. Those are all organisms that have become extinct. And there's lots and lots of different types of fossils that um, become preserved in sedimentary rock. Okay, and, and from those videos, you'll be able to see examples as well as from the links to the website. All right, so. If we just go through, you can read through all of this. Okay, there's different um, photographs of different types of fossils. I've even got some of these in my lab, as I've said before. Um, there's some more examples of fossils and the beautiful ammonites that are very common along the rocky seashores in different parts of the world, and the trilobites, and there's a, um, a woolly mammoth fossil. And fossils generally, um, in order to be considered to be a fossil, they need to be 10,000 years old. All right. And sometimes if the animal, you will see in the videos, if it's covered um, protein, if it, was, if it wasn't um, carried away by animals or eaten up, then you see um, you know, the whole organism being fossilized. All right, and there's a fern imprint, and I've got um, a very faint fern imprint um, fossil in my classroom, which I'll show you when you get back, and starfish fossil, and fish fossil. And I love this one because this fish is eating another fish when it, um, when it was um, covered with sediment and it was become a fossil. And amber, now amber is tree resin, the sap that comes out of trees and can um, become fossilized. And insect fossils in amber are very, very sought after, very expensive to use. Okay? Um, fossilized teeth of um, mastodons, you know, the, um, they're similar to elephants but they're extinct. Okay, they've uncovered a whole um, fossil of a mammoth recently. Then there's all the hominid fossils, and South Africa has many of those. Okay, if you um, keep up to date with all the information from um, Cradle of Human Time, okay, lots of hominid fossils are found. And then there's some information about what type of conditions are needed in order for fossils to form, if they exist fossils. And there you go, okay, nice summary of um, fossil formation. And forming fossils is actually very really rare. Okay, the, the, the um, conditions have to be perfect in order for fossils to form. So the fossil record is said to be incomplete. Not everything has been fossilized, and that's why it's quite a puzzle to try and put everything together if you don't have all the information. And there's some nice diagrams, you can go and have a look at that. And even at the cradle of humankind, um, Stagman Cave, okay, that area, um, Maripeng, you see um, excavation sites where they very painstakingly, slowly, patiently dig out fossils. All right, so I want to go through um, this diagram a little bit. This is something that you do need to be familiar with. So as explained in the video, the, um, the rock layers are formed, the youngest rocks nearest to the top over millions of years. And if you look here, very um, simple organisms will be found lower down, and all of these rock layers are called strata. So this is called a rock profile. And the youngest organisms, the fossils of those, will be found in the lower rock, um, rock layers. And as you go further up to the surface, you would find the um, fossil remains of more advanced um, organisms. And sometimes there might not be any fossils. It just depends on the conditions and the kind of organisms we, that were around at, the, at that particular time. All right, so you can go through all of this looking at the strata. And I mean, this basically allows us to determine the relative age of fossils. So we, we can then determine that this fossil over here is much older than the ones at the bottom. Okay, but we can't tell exactly how, you know, how many 
millions of years old, um, or how many millions of years ago those organisms lived. And that would be the absolute age, okay? That we cannot do by just comparing the, the layers um, to the fossil time. So there's an example of strata, in, um, a famous strata in Dorset in England, and all these different layers. We see the strata, and we'd be very lucky to find fossils in those. Okay, so dating fossils, we call we, we um, simplest way to determine the relative age of fossils, like I said just now, is if um, fossils are found above others, and the ones at the top and the rock layers above are then younger than the ones that are down below. Okay, so that's called relative dating. All right, and obviously um, fossils that are found in rocks that uh, or similar fossils, the trilobites are found in different um, rock layers in different regions, and they both contain a trial of us, then you can assume that those rock layers are of similar age. Okay, so that's just a, the, the, a relatively simple way of determining if um, fossils are older or younger. Okay, but then obviously, you know, um, sedimentary rocks, if you think about it, sand compresses to form rock, and the sand that becomes the rock was present way before the rock was ever formed. So you can't really determine the age of the fossil by determining the actual age of the rock that it's found in. Because that rock is made from sand that was formed millions of years ago. And we know that um, sand is formed from the weather, the breaking down of rock. So sand that gets blown in, covers a dead organism, and becomes rock over millions of years. Um, the rock that forms is actually much older than when the, um, the organism was covered. So there's another way to determine the age of um, the age of fossils. Okay, so you look for igneous rock. Now igneous rock is volcanic rock. In other words, lava that is spewed out of volcanoes and it was laid down in, in, in and it's new rock. So when it's laid down, it, it cools down and solidifies. That is now new rock. Okay, it's not made from sand from long ago okay so you could actually um, if you've got a fossil in a, um, a rock layer and nearby is igneous volcanic rock that has cooled that has become cooled down and become rock you can determine the age of the volcanic rock and then you can say that the um, the age of the fossil in the sedimentary rock is the same age as the volcanic rock okay i hope that makes sense because this rock was made from sand that was formed millions of years ago Okay, so the fossil in the sedimentary rock would be of similar age to volcanic rock that was spewed out, cooled, and became hardened to form rock. It would be of similar age to the igneous rock. So it's more accurate. All right, so if we look here, there's some igneous rock flowing down a volcanic um, down a volcano and it's going to cool down, and that's what it looks like. So that's what you can determine the age of. And it will be the same age as the fossils in the, in the layers of rock. Uh, sedimentary rocks that are close by. Okay. All right. Now, radiometric dating is mentioned in all. Well, there's quite a bit in the textbook, but um, it's quite a complicated process. It's a, a method whereby scientists are able to determine the age of um, fossils or rocks or other materials in millions of years. Now, we are not going to ask you to study this. Um, it is quite confusing, but I'm going to. I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, there's quite a bit of information here, but let me just show you this diagram. So, radioactive elements are found in everything, okay? So, rocks and fossils and whatever. And radiation, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a, a nuclear scientist, but basically it works like this. So, uranium, for well, let's just say, potassium 40, okay, if that radioactive material is found in a fossil, then it's going to change into another isotope. So this is a radioactive isotope, potassium-40, and over a certain amount of time, a well-known measured amount of time, it will decay, it will change into another radioactive isotope called argon. And the half-life, in other words, for half, if you had 10 grams of potassium-40, and half of it changed into argon 40, and there was still 10 grams of potassium 40 left, then you would know that it is 1.3 billion years old. Okay? So if potassium 40 and argon 40 amounts are equal, so there was 
20 grand of the tax and 40 and half of it has been paid into another outer code called Argon 40, then you know that that subsidy, that fossil, that rock is 1.3 billion years old because it's half of it has been paid into the other outer code. All right, then there's another example here. So if the rock that you're trying to date is you know, the one that's near the fossil, okay, if half, if it has of the original amount of potassium 40 that, that it has, if, if it got half that amount and double the amount of argon 40, so more of it has decayed into argon 40, then you double this. So we can say that that rock is 2.6 billion years old. So you can probably see why we are not going to ask you this. But it's a nice thing to, you know, to have an idea of how they actually determine the age of fossils. You know, 60 million years is, is quite a huge amount and it's, it's quite difficult to to comprehend how they do that. All right, so now fossils, in order to be a fossil, um, it must be 10,000 or more years old. Now, obviously, if you're trying to date fossils of little bacteria in Western Australia that were found in those rocks, you need millions and millions of years. So you need an isotope that takes um, much longer to decay. So in order to date fossils, scientists use isotopes of elements with longer half lives. So if you're dating something that is really, really ancient, like trilobite or bacterial fossil, then you're going to, um, you're going to de determine how much uranium in that rock has changed into this, or how much potassium 40 has changed into argon 40. And that's the general idea, but we're not going to ask you all of that. Maybe it's a little bit easier to understand here. So how many atoms are, you know, how much how much of the original isotope and how much of the new isotope that's changed in the present, and here's the number of half lives. Okay, so if the if the rock that you found only contains potassium 40, all right, then it really hasn't decayed at all, so it must be a very young um, young rock. But if half of it, okay, if 50% of that the radioactive um, potassium 40 in the rock have already decayed into argon 40, then it's one half life, so it's 30 billion years old. If, let's try and do this, if three quarters of that, um, the potassium 40 in the original rock has decayed into argon 40, then it's two half lives. Then you know um, that the, the rock is 2.6 billion years old. And if even more of the original radioactive isotopes in the rock has decayed, say, what is this now? This is about 10% of the original isotope, but there's 90% of the new isotope, then you know that the age of the rock is four times 1.2 billion years old. All right, so that's something that we might be interested in. Now, the rest of the textbook has got lots of examples of the types of fossils that have been found in South Africa. You know, we could give you a case study, we could give you a comprehension. I don't expect you to go and learn all, this, all of this, but I mean, we are rich in fossils. So, fossilized bacteria in Barberton, early land plants, grand sites, um, Lysopterus, you know, these early primitive forests in Moirisi, for example. Soft bodied animals in Namibia, the coelacanth, which is my favorite, dinosaurs in the Glasses, Birds, etc. Um, mammal like reptiles, those Theraxodes, Kazoos, um, first. True mammals in these regions and hominids, early humans in Kaoping, like you know, the cradle of the cut. So please don't go and learn all that, but go and read in the textbook. All right, and then you know, we are um, we are well known to our fossils, and a lot of uh, scientists and researchers come and study here. And for example, um, Professor Lieberger, the um, the uh, professor who found the Australopithecus sediba fossil that I talked about and Herman and Eddie. I mean, he, he came and studied that. He, well, he came and worked at the Zulu American and he's been living there for many years. And he actually, when, um, when Australopithecus sediba and Herman and Eddie fossils were found, he did not keep all that information to himself. And only, you know, two people who said, he, um, he used social media like Facebook and said, Guys around the world, researchers, come and help me. Come and help me dig this out. Come and help me research it. Let's come and work out this information together. So we can consider that paleotourism. A lot of people will come and see our fossils and they will go and visit Maritain. And a lot of researchers actually come with this way. So it's become you know, like the worldwide web of fossils. So that's something to think about. All right. So what I've said here, 
um, in your textbook on page 190, you can do question one and two. Okay, question three is similar to the one in the worksheet that I've made. So I've taken all the questions and I've made this, I know it's a very long worksheet, it's 11 pages long, but there's lots of ecology questions and then there are, um, sorry, it's history of life and fossil worksheets. Okay, so the ecology questions you can do in your own time and that will help you to revise the section on ecology, which we finished um, last year. But then, the questions that I've started in red on that worksheet, they, um, they can type up in red and they are on history of life on Earth and fossils. So multiple choice questions, 1.11 to 1.14, and the longer questions, 5, 6, 7, and 8. I want you to, once you've completed the section, so it will be for next week sometime, I want you to please answer these questions and you need to type it up and I will give you instructions of how, you know, when to upload it into Google Drive. Okay, and that will be 55 marks and it will count for three too. All right, so please do your best and make sure you understand how to do all of this. All right, and make sure you watch all the nice videos that I've uploaded on Softball, the few videos that I've uploaded, as well as um, look at that website of um, the link and it's, it gives a lovely description on how I've got it. And I hope you enjoy that. Okay, goodbye.